Michael Jackson was a man known for many things, including his music, his pelvis-centric dance moves, and the fact he was able to wear a fedora without looking like an idiot. But a man as complex and unique as the king of pop could never be summed up with a list of just three things. So here's a list of ten, starting with Ten. He personally leaked some of the more bizarre stories about himself. Jackson, in stark contrast with the innocent childlike persona he adopted in public, was a calculating and efficient self-promoter behind the scenes. For example, he is known to have leaked several stories about himself to the press to ensure he continued to receive column inches in the world's papers when he wasn't actively making music. Stories known to have been planted by Jackson himself include the one about him sleeping in a hyperbaric oxygen chamber to make himself look younger. The news that he'd made a bid to purchase the skeleton of John Merrick, better known as the Elephant Man. And the fact he shared his bathroom with his pet monkey, Bubbles. While these stories undoubtedly gave Jackson unprecedented levels of media coverage, it eventually backfired when the press simply began making stuff up themselves, much to his annoyance. When the British media began referring to Jackson as Wacko Jacko he made the conscious and probably wise decision to stop leaking false stories to the news about his personal life. Nine. He wrote all of his songs with his voice. Despite being credited as the sole writer on virtually his entire discography and having a hand in the composition of much of the music to his back catalog of hits, Michael Jackson rather surprisingly had little affinity for music. By this we mean that, although Jackson understood how to compose a song, he could neither play an instrument nor read sheet music. To get around this, Jackson would instead compose his songs entirely in his head and then sing them to session musicians while recording his albums. As an example of just how talented Jackson was at emulating the sounds of various instruments with his voice, musicians who worked with him reported that he could sync chords and layer his voice skillfully enough to eerily replicate an entire string section. For a guy known worldwide as the king of pop, it's kind of weird that few people ever talk about that time in 1992 when Michael Jackson actually became a real king. You see, in the early 90s Jackson embarked on a tour of Africa during which he encountered a small kingdom on the Ivory Coast called Sanwi. The people of Sanwi were enamored with Jackson and the tribal chief told him that mystics had foretold that the singer was actually a direct descendant of the Sanwi royal bloodline. So in a small but nonetheless extravagant ceremony, the nation crowned Jackson King, an official title he had to sign papers to confirm, and even allowed him to sit in a golden throne set aside for royalty. Jackson's official title was later reduced to Crown Prince, and his kingly duties were taken up by another man, but he was for all intents and purposes considered genuine royalty from that point on. Sanwi even held a royal funeral for him and declared two days of mourning when he died. As for why you've probably never heard this, Jackson simply never talked about it. In an interview with Ebony Magazine in 1992, Jackson was humble about his newfound status as a king, telling an interviewer asking how it felt to be a real king. Seven. He earns more money dead than we will alive. Now you'd think that being dead would, for most people, put an end to their ability to make money. 
employers are notoriously picky when it comes to hiring people who aren't alive. Michael Jackson is an apparent exception to this rule, being recognized as the highest-earning dead celebrity, earning close to a billion dollars in 2016, more than seven years after his death. Jackson's ability to earn unbelievably fat stacks of cash despite the normally insurmountable hurdle of being dead is mainly due to sales and licensing of the vast catalogs of music he owned. Along with his estate owning the rights to his own hits and albums, which continued to make millions, Jackson also bought the rights to his favorite songs during his lifetime, so he earned money when people bought those albums too. Most famously, he bought the rights to the Beatles catalog in 1985, though Sony has since acquired full ownership, including Jackson's remaining 50% stake last year. We don't know if that's smart or just selfish, but either way we're mad impressed that a skeleton earns more than us thanks to business decisions it made a decade ago. Speaking of Jackson's skeleton. Six. His death broke Google. Like the moon landing and losing your virginity, the death of Michael Jackson is an event where you remember exactly where you were when it happened. It was a global event that resulted in an almost immediate outpouring of grief. We say almost, of course, because people had to check Google to make sure the news was accurate. That's not us being facetious, by the way. According to stats released by Google themselves minutes after news of the singer's death broke, so many millions of people tried to search his name that it brought the monolithic website to its knees. Yes, Michael Jackson's death caused so many people to panic and Google his name that it broke Google. Then again, this is hardly surprising given that a few months before his death news of him touring again caused Five. People scalped his tickets that didn't exist yet for hundreds on eBay. Demand for tickets was such that Jackson's official website offered fans a chance to enter a pre-sale draw, essentially securing them a chance to purchase a ticket ahead of time so they wouldn't have to sit on the ticket website the day they were announced and hit refresh over and over. The offer crashed the website, with a reported 16,000 people trying to apply for the draw every second for several hours. This unprecedented level of enthusiasm saw people who managed to secure a place in the pre-sale draw able to sell their tickets, which didn't exist yet, on eBay for upwards of $500 apiece. Then again, it's not surprising people were so keen to see Jackson perform considering he once Though he didn't necessarily invent the moonwalk, the genesis of the move is traced back to dancer Cab Calloway and is thought to have been perfected by my Marcel Marceau, he is arguably the person who showed the world just how cool it could look to see a man effortlessly glide backwards like he was just pushed onto a greased air hockey table. Jackson reportedly learned the move from a pair of dancers named Casper Candidate and Cooley Jackson, whom he saw perform it on the show Soul Train while sporting dangerously awesome afros. Jackson perfected the dance move and debuted his enhanced version at Motown 25 to a visibly and audibly shocked crowd who couldn't believe what in the hell they were seeing. Sitting at home watching the show was an 84-year-old Fred Astaire who, upon seeing Jackson glide across the stage, picked up his phone and called him to gush over how amazing it was. Jackson, a massive fan of Astaire's, 
fanboyed down the phone for several minutes before quickly rushing to a nearby bathroom and vomiting in excitement. Three. The glove was to hide a skin condition. Custom made by the same guy who made the gloves for Kate Winslet in Titanic, Jackson sported many different styles of gloves over the years. While many assumed that glove was simply for style, because it admittedly does look pretty fly, according to those close to Jackson it was actually used to hide the early stages of vitiligo, a disease which caused the skin to change color and often starts with unsightly blotches on the hands and feet. This doesn't exactly fit with other reports, though, which claim that Jackson had a direct hand in creating a number of tracks for the game, but ultimately became frustrated with the limited range of the sound chip in the Sega Genesis, leaving the project of his own volition. As a result the extent of Jackson's involvement with Sonic 3 isn't clear, but for anyone curious, the songs often thought to be the ones most likely to have been compassed by Jackson, at least in part, are Carnival Night Zone, Hydro Cities Zone, and Ice Cap Zone. It's noted that Jackson personally reached out to the staff of the show to ask for a bit part and took his role extremely seriously, taking part in line readings with the rest of the cast and refusing the use of a special trailer set aside for him. During his time with The Simpsons staff, Jackson explained to Matt Groening that Bart was his favorite character and that he wanted to write the troublesome 10-year-old and number one hit single. Groening laughed, assuming Jackson was joking. He wasn't joking, 